Hi, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about macros. I'm going to show you how to make your own macro, how to import and export macros, how to save them in your library, and then I'm going to show you some of my own macros at the end that you can download for free if you just follow the link in the description. So, what is a macro first? A macro is a way to save multiple operations and then play them back again with just one click. So it's really handy if you do a lot of the same things over and over again. You can just record it and then just play it back every time you open that a picture. Just click one button instead of doing you know three to a million things, whatever, however many it is you do. So let's get started. First we need to come up to view and then studio and this is where you'll find your macro and library windows. Make sure that they're checked so that they're open. The macro is this is going to make the macros and the library is where we're going to store all our other macros. So here in the macro window we have record, stop, when you're done you just put stop, play, we'll play back the macro so you can view it and make sure it's the way you want, reset, it clears everything so you can start over, this adds to the library and then export and import. Export and importing gave me a little bit of a headache so I just didn't understand it in the beginning so hopefully I can save you a little bit of headache by explaining it in this video. All right, first, I'm just going to make one just to show you what it can do. Now, I like to add, oh, first, the most important thing we need to do that I forget to do commonly is click the record button. So many times I have forgotten that, and then I had to go back and start over because it didn't save anything. So make sure it's recording, and it is. And now I like to add, oh, well, I like to add lots of things. I do all kinds of different stuff, but, um, Sometimes if I have an LUT that I really like that I want to do on a lot of different pictures, you can't use the LUT for a, to batch process alone by itself, but you can turn it into a macro. And then you can use the macro for batch processing. So what you can do is you just open the LUT window and then you go to I'm going to go to adjustments over here and that see yep, I have way too many of these. But go to adjustments and then is LUT. It's the easiest way for me to find them. And it opens up all of them that I have here on my computer. So we're just going to pick one. And we're going to go back to the macro window. Then it's showing us what we're doing. Every step gets recorded below. So first thing we do is on top. The very last thing we do will be at the bottom. Okay. And then we can do other adjustments if we want. I'm not going to add too many because it slows everything down, but I do want to show you about shapes. There's, If you want to make a shape, because sometimes I like to make circles, blurry circles that kind of make look like a little bit of sunlight coming in. And so if I want to make a macro to do that for me, there's one thing I discovered you have to do. You have to pick your color first. See, if I was to make a shape now, it would come out as black. And when you're recording a macro, you can't change the fill color of your shape after you've already made your shape. So I'm going to go and make sure that a color that I want is selected. And then we can go back to layers. And now we can click on our shape. You can use any shape you want. I'm just going to use a circle. Make sure the right fill color is there. And now you can make a circle. And when you're done, just push the V on your keyboard. That opens up the move tool and then you can just move it wherever, usually in the corner. We're not going to worry too much about the size or anything because we can adjust that later. But we are going to add, oh, there we go, need to have that selected. We are going to add a filter. So we're going to go to filters, blur, and then we're going to go to Gaussian blur. Normally when you use Gaussian blur, let me show you, if you move it all the way over, you drag the slider all the way over, it only goes to 100. But if you click in the box, you can change that. We're going to change it to 800 for this one. And then click apply. And then we wait a minute for it to think about it. So I don't want to add too many layers. The more layers you add, the more it will bog down your computer. My computer's a little slow today, so we're just going to do these two layers. But you can add as many as you want. Just keep on recording. So we're done. This is all we want to do. So I'm going to click Stop. But now before I save it or anything else, I'm going to come over here to the side. Now, every one of these layers, that we, every step that we did has a checkbox. So that if we wanted to go back and turn one of these off before we saved it, we can. So if we 
didn't want, I don't know, let's just say we didn't like the last four things we did. So we just uncheck them, and then when we save the macro, it'll only save these three that got checked. But we, we do want these on, so we'll leave them checked. And then some of them have a little cog next to them when we've made a change. Now, if you click on that, it'll bring up some changes that you can make. This is the LUT, and we can change the opacity or the blend mode if we want. I don't usually uh, have these on. If they're off by default, if you want to make the changes before you apply the LUT to your next image, you need to have them on. But I don't usually leave these things on unless I know for certain that's how I want it, to, or I know for certain I'm going to want to change it. But it it's slower. I think it's a little slower because you can always make changes to these separate layers later on. The ones you need to worry about, let me show you this one. This was, is for our circle that we made, and I never turn that one on because it's just not necessary. But the one that is necessary is the Gaussian Blur because it's a filter, and it was applied directly to our circle up here. So any changes that we made, we aren't going to be able to unchange. Like if we wanted to change the amount of blur on a different picture, we wouldn't be able to unless we make sure that little eyeball is on. You know, turn that on. Now, next time we do this, it will pull that up and ask us to make a selection first to choose how much blur we want before it applies it. So let me show you. We are going to delete those layers. All right, is everything still saved down here? Now to test it and see how it works, we're going to click play. And it called it wild. <laughs> that was from before. So first we have to wait for it to generate a preview, which some macros are really fast, some it's really slow. And then here it has the radius of the Gaussian blur, and I don't want to mess with it because that'll just take time. So we'll just click apply and wait for it to apply it. But you can do that to every image. And then when it's done, it will have the LUT layer and the circle layer over here, just like we had it. So see, so you can always go back and just double click on that and you can even change to a different LUT if you want. You can change the opacity, the blend mode, you can do whatever you want once it's there. That's why I don't usually turn on the little, the selections down here, because it just takes time. All right, and that is how you make a macro. Now we need to save it. So we love it, we want to use it multiple times, so we're going to save it. And we are first going to save it into our library. And we're going to give it a name. We'll call it Sun. And then we need to choose a category. Uh, I made a category called My Macros, where I save my macros. So we're going to save it in there. And we're going to call it Sun. And it, in the library panel over here, we've got My Macros category. And it just puts it at the bottom. And we already know it works, and so we're not going to test it again. Because that'll just take more time. <laughs> Okay, I'll go back to the macros panel. All right, now, now let's do some importing and exporting. And this is the part that frustrated me at first, but now I understand it. So let's say I wanted to export it so that I could share it. Oh, we're gonna call it sun. It's already up here, so we'll just do it again. Click save, and yes. All right, so now we've exported it. So now if I go to my library panel, and I click up here in the corner, and I click Import Macros. And yeah, I'm going to delete this one. But see, the Sun one is not here. I don't see it. That made me mad. That was very frustrating. I didn't know why it wasn't working. I thought something was wrong. But as it turns out, it's gonna cancel. you can't import single macros into your library directly. If you want to import a macro, just one macro, we're going to go ahead and clear this now. You come to the macro window and you come over here to import. You click on import. And now we can see the macro. So we click on it, click open, and there it is. And from here, you can even make adjustments. You can click record again and add things to it if you want. Or you can add it to your library from here. I'm not going to do it again. But So if you did want to share macros with people, if you wanted to share it so that they could just directly import it into their library, which I did, let me show you. 
you come over here to library and oh, first let me show you really quickly if when you're in your library panel over here this is where you create new categories so if you have one oops there we go nope <laughs> sorry I did it twice if, it just adds it to the bottom and then you can come over here and rename it later <laughs> oh, we don't want to do that we just want to delete them forgot what it was doing all right so let me delete these so if you want to make another category where you add everything that you're going to share or something like that or just the ones you've made then just make a new category change the name and then you can just add everything to that to that category and then when you want to share it you just come up to find the category you want click over here and export macros and then by default it will choose the name of the category so you can change it if you want or you don't have to we're going to leave it the same and click save so now if i want to import macros i go to import macros and there's the file so i open it and then down here it made a new folder i called it my macros too because i already had one but everything that was in the original category appears here so you can share all of them all at once, but, which I actually I like that. If you have a whole bunch of macros, instead of sending them individually, you just do it all at once. Yes, get rid of that. All right. Yeah, that's, that's about all there is to importing and exporting. Oh, one more thing. If you right click on a macro in your library, oh, hold on, let me, let me get rid of this first so it can show you. You go to the library and if there's something that you want to change, if you have a macro you like, but you want to make a change from here, um, if you right click on it, you can just click on edit macro and it will pull it up into your macro window for you, or you can click record and make any changes you want or adjustments, whatever you need to do. So now I'm going to just briefly show you, if I can delete that. All right, I'm just going to briefly show you the macros that I made. I actually, this one's not there. I'm going to delete this one. I might make that again later and add it, but for right now, the ones that are on my website, they're all in a zip folder. I just exported the whole category. So you should be able to just open your library window and come over here and click import. You know, after you've downloaded and unzipped my file, you, you should be able to import it with no problem. And it'll just make a new category. You can change the name if you want, whatever you need to do. So I have one called Circular Boca, which I made so long ago, I don't remember how I even made it or why I even made it. But it, it makes a boca effect. And if you make if you make some changes here, it'll change the size of the circles. And you can blend them, you can put them in the background, you know, you just you know, do whatever you want with it, have fun. So that's what that one does. And then I have one that uses a curves adjustment to do black and white. It, sometimes it can be really bright and harsh, and I don't always use it for black and white pictures. A lot of the times I like to just change the blend mode to multiply. I just like the effect it gives, well, especially on this picture because it makes the owl really pop out. But it's different for every picture. You can just play around with it. Let me delete it. And then I have one where it makes a non-destructive dodge and burn layer, which is so nice. And then you just click it, it's done. You don't have to do anything else. You can just start dodging and burning away. I'm gonna delete it. And then I have one here called, I called it Rich Warmth. Cause it just makes it rich and warm. <laughs> and you can adjust, it makes a white balance layer and a curves layer. And before it applies it, you can adjust it if you want. Or afterwards, this one loads fast, so it's not a big deal. But you can go back and change the blend modes, change the opacity, change whatever you want. So that's what I've got. Just go to the link, click on it, download it, and they're yours. And as I make more, I'll add them to my website because they're fun. I like to make them. I like to make things easy for myself. All right. So if you have any questions or comments, just don't forget to put them below and like the video and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks for watching.